I'm sure you've probably heard the importance of brushing your dog's teeth before, but that can be easier said than done, especially when you got a wiggly puppy like this, or maybe your dog doesn't like having their mouth or their teeth handled, or strange things like brushes with bristles in their mouth. So this video is to help you learn how to condition your dog to make brushing their teeth a complete breeze. Whenever you're training anything with your dog, the idea is to break things down into much smaller steps that are easily achievable each step of the way with your dog, and then bridging those steps all together to get to the end result. So I'm gonna take you through nine sessions that are recorded with Bavachi, where I break it down into the steps to equal that final result of being able to brush her teeth. In this case, for a full 30 seconds of stress-free, completely cooperative teeth brushing. She's batty. Now before we dive in, you might be wondering what kind of toothbrush and toothpaste should I use? It really is just about what's most comfortable for you and your dog. So even though there's a wide variety of both out there, pick something that's gonna be easy. Outside of size, like the difference between the mouth of a Great Dane or a Chihuahua, there's not a lot of difference. In this video, I'm gonna use a double-sided brush with a small head and a large head, but I'll also show you how to condition in finger brushing if that's easier for you too. When it comes to toothpaste, this I'm a little bit more picky about. I like using things that have the BOHC seal, which looks like this. That means it's approved by the Veterinary Oral Health Council. So I like using all toothpastes that have that BOHC seal. All right, let's get to brushing some puppy teeth. Welcome to session one. The first thing to know is first impressions matter. And for that reason, you're gonna see a lot more footage from session one in real time than the other eight sessions. Now, this is because it's where you set the tone for how you're gonna spend your time together in training. To get Bobachi in the right frame of mind, I have a play session with her first, and I usually involve a physical activity like fetch or tug to help get those wiggles out. Play introduces fun for her, gets those crazy puppy wiggles out, and it puts her in a mind in a way better position for learning. I also involve her in any of the unboxing processes with new objects related to our training or activities. You can have a lot of influence about how your dog feels about new things based on how you present it to them. So here, I'm using something yummy to say, this is going to be fun. You're going to enjoy this instead of just doing the thing with her. You can see I speed up a lot of these clips just to save time, but take your time with these exercises. Don't rush it. Now here you can see I have treats too, and you might be thinking, well, isn't the point of brushing your dog's teeth to remove food from their teeth? And that's twofold. Number one, my goal right now is not actually to brush her teeth. It's to condition her to teeth teeth brushing. Number two, yes, brushing does remove food, but the primary purpose of that brushing is actually to remove the buildup, the plaque, so that it doesn't turn into tartar. So it's that mechanical movement of the brushing. Okay, so you can see that I've already started with some conditioning and some handling. I start every session with either something that the dog already knows. In this case, it's a chin rest, which will help with overall handling of her muzzle and nose or I'll start with something that I can use to build up to what it is that I'm going to be doing. So if I'm gonna be handling different body parts, I want to do little baby steps and bridge things together that will make it easier for me to handle those body parts. So here, I start with a chin rest and then I can easily and quickly move to from the bottom of her chin up to the top of the bridge of her nose. The reason I do this is because it's a lot easier for me to condition her to this type of handling so I can pull her lips up and out of the way to be able to access the teeth for brushing. You'll notice that I'm actually putting my hand towards her muzzle and I'm going towards her face, but I'm actually gonna switch this up as quickly as possible to where I can encourage her, based on what I've started with her, to bring her nose or her muzzle towards my hand or into my hand, rather than me having to go towards her face each and every time. This allows me to create what's known as a start button. And a start button is a really, really powerful tool. The start button gives the dog the opportunity or the choice to say, yes, I feel comfortable, I'm having fun, let's keep going, or to pull their face away and say, I'm not feeling it right now, I'm bored, I wanna do something else, or I'm uncomfortable, please break it down a little bit slower. So a start button basically helps with that two-way communication so that I know how quickly to advance her or when to pull back and give her a little bit more time with a specific exercise that I'm working on. I'm also gonna slowly increase the amount of time that I'm actually making contact with her muzzle and nose so that she gets more and more comfortable with me holding it for longer periods of time. To do this, I just use a simple treat train. So I try to give her the next treat and the next treat and the next treat before she has the opportunity to actually pull away, just to show her that I want her to keep it there a little bit longer and a little bit longer each time. Now notice how she's already starting to push her face in towards my hand. This lets me know that she is on board with this activity. She's having a good time with it so I can keep going. 
For most dogs, this is where I would recommend stopping the session and just focusing on that handling to begin with, but Babaji has a really high tolerance for work, so I'm gonna give her a break. I do a little bit of bowling for treats and just reset her brain before I bring her back to the session after her break and start advancing it even further. But for the average companion dog at home, go ahead and end your session. It's more about how many times per day, how many repetitions you get in, as opposed to the amount of time that you actually spend with the dog in each session. It's much more efficient, for example, to do three five minute sessions in one day than it is to combine all of those into one session that is 15 minutes long. The reps are the key to making it stick. Additionally, going back and forth between the new skill and the known skill can make progression much easier. So for example, here, my new skill is that I'm going over the top of her nose with handling and I want to eventually be able to pull her lips up over her teeth. And the previously known skill is the chin rest. This can make the dog much more comfortable and continue their motivation to keep working towards the new skill. This next part of the progression that I'm moving through where I'm actually starting to lift her lip is a good place to start with your second session in terms of what new skill you're gonna begin folding in. So start your second session with something she already knows, the chin rest, some of the handling that you did prior. That way you can build on top of what you did in your last session to start lifting up the lip. Now what you wanna do is just offer a treat, offer a reward each time you lift the lip. Now notice in here sometimes that Babachi will pull her face back or back up or back away or want me to let go. When she does this, I immediately let go. This is so important from a team aspect and giving your dog the agency and the choice that will make them feel as comfortable as possible participating in this and feeling safe and trusting you. So if your dog pulls away or needs a break or doesn't like what's going on, let them, let them pull away, let them make that choice. You'll be surprised how much giving them that agency and that choice makes them want to work with you even more. Now, as you progress, through these sessions with your dog, keep in mind that it's the repetition, the consistent repetition that's going to increase their learning the fastest. So have three sessions a day that are just five minutes at a time rather than one long session that might be 15 minutes at a time. Now watch this. See if you catch where she gives a slight head duck and I immediately pull away to give her space. I reapproach again and here you can see another moment where I anticipate where she's gonna pull away and so I immediately stop. You're not gonna catch it every single time, so don't set that level of expectation for yourself. Dogs are way faster than we are, but I wanna point it out so that you can pay attention and you can slow down as your dog is asking you to slow down and you can advance it when they're saying, nope, I'm good to go, let's keep moving. I know this has already been a lot to get through, but if you're still watching, get ready. We're about to pick up the pace and go ahead and pat yourself on the pet parent back for being committed to this process. Now, before I do a cool down with Vivachi, the last part of her first session, I start building in a bottom jaw hold. This is a good place to start in your third session after your initial warm up with previous skills. Building in a jaw hold will eventually help to make um, fully opening her mouth much easier to clean her back molars. And it also makes oral exams with her doggy doctor a piece of cake. To be able to show you everything that I did in the next several clips, I had to speed things up, but feel free to slow the footage down and look for additional subtle signs and timing indicators. You can also pause in between your sessions with your pup and pick right back up where you left off. Next session. So I'm gonna start right back where I was before with the first skill, which is a known chin rest. I'm gonna practice that a couple times, practice the over the muzzle holds again, and then roll in the new skill that I left off with last, which is the jaw hold. You'll notice I start looking more and more for eye contact to where she's paying less attention to what's going on, the treats, the toothbrush, and more attention to me. And then I'm also gonna intro the toothpaste here again, let her taste it and get her set up for the next skill. This is where I start integrating the toothbrush in my hand to get her familiar with the toothbrush and my hand lifting her lip at the same time. I give her a little break here to taste the toothpaste and then I start again. You can see she's not really sure what to expect but she loves the taste of the toothpaste. I'm gonna go ahead and give her a treat, tell her yes, good job, and keep moving. Here she backs up a little bit but I kind of maintain because she's just not sure but she's doing great. Let her look again just to reinforce that she's on the right path. There, I'm gonna pause because she backed out of my hand and it was a little bit too much so I slowed down, waited a second, and then started again and she was much more comfortable the second time around after stopping. Next up, I'm just gonna repeat, 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 repeat and continue this practice. And then eventually I'm gonna slowly roll in, just lifting my hand to see if she begins to hit that start button to play this game.
Now she's really picking up on holding her position when I pull her lip up to expose her teeth. That's really gonna help with the duration in terms of holding her lip up so I have plenty of time to brush and she tolerates it just fine. You'll also notice from time to time that when I put my hand up, sometimes I'll wiggle my fingers. All I'm doing is just giving her a cue, a hint to go ahead and encourage that start button and that she's on the right track, keep going. Yes, you're doing exactly what it is that I'm looking for. You'll also see me hide the treat behind my back several times and that's because she just shifts her focus to the food because she's so food motivated. So in order to kind of get her back on track and to be thinking, not just food, 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 I'll hide that treat behind my back and then I'll pull it out when I'm ready to give it to her. Another way to help keep her on track is to slow it down and take a step back. So make it a little bit easier, take it back to a step that we've already kind of mastered, just so she has an easy win and can refocus. That really helps keep the motivation going. So it's not just always harder, 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 harder. Sometimes it's harder, harder, easy. Harder, 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 easier. And I find that you can progress with a dog in any type of training when you use this type of cha-cha, as I call it, method, where it's a couple steps forward, a step back, a couple more steps forward, and a step back. To advance her comfort and skill level, I roll in and build on top of what I did during the prior session for both easy wins and familiarity, but I also roll in things that we've already done in the very same session here and there for the exact same effect. Each time you start a new session, don't forget to play with your dog first. It really does help get those top high arousal energy wiggles out so that the dog can focus better. But play is such a powerful tool for bonding with your dog and it helps training go so much more smoothly. The dog wants to connect and wants to work with you. You're just much more exciting when you play with your dog. Now in training, I always follow a play, work, enrich, rest cycle. And I'm telling you what, it has elevated my training game. Dogs have needs just like we do, and just implementing that play, work, and rich rest cycle has significantly helped me meet my dog's daily needs. Notice that this is my third session with Babachi, and the very first time that I'm actually making contact with her teeth and the toothbrush. You can see in this video, I started just by touching her teeth, letting go, giving her a treat, holding her lip up, touching her teeth with the toothbrush, letting go and giving her a treat afterwards. And then I can very quickly advance from there to holding her lip up, brushing a little bit, letting go, and then giving her a reward for that. Now you'll notice she's not super comfortable with this process just yet. So you might be asking, when do I let go and let her pull her head away? Or when do I press forward? Well, I typically judge this by how comfortable the dog is. Are they slightly unsure to where they're like, could probably play along. If so, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep moving and give them little breaks in between. If they're yanking their head back or moving away or definitely practicing some avoidance or showing other signs of stress, then I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and take a few steps back and make it much easier. My next step in this session is to bring the toothpaste back into the equation. So I had already introduced it to her by letting her taste it, but now I'm gonna actually put it on the toothbrush. And I wanna mention here that toothpaste is not actually required. Yes, it can contribute to good overall oral health when you use it, but it's the physical motion, the mechanical motion of the brush that's really important. To quote an expert, a board certified veterinary dentist, Dr. Katherine Quack, who is highly regarded in the field, studies have shown that the physical action of brushing the teeth with a brush is sufficient to remove plaque. No paste is needed. However, there are very few pets that will allow you to brush without flavored toothpaste. In addition, the pastes have added enzymes to aerate the gingival sulcus, thus making it a more unfavorable environment for bacteria to grow. For me, toothpaste is kind of a double-edged sword because on one hand, it does help with overall oral health, but on the other hand, it also increases the likelihood that the dog is gonna continuously lick at the toothpaste and the toothbrush while you're trying to brush the teeth. And that can make things kind of difficult. So here, while I'm introducing the toothpaste and I'm trying to work with it on the brush, ultimately my decision in training Bavachi is gonna to be to use a little bit of water and sometimes a little bit of toothpaste. Now, while I'm gonna switch up what I'm actually gonna do with Bavachi, I do love a good training challenge. So I'll also work to reduce licking by decreasing the contact time to her teeth when there's toothpaste reward with a treat before she has the chance to lick and slowly increase the contact time with her teeth, the paste and brushing with treats in between when licking isn't present. When she licks, I'll just pause for a moment and then restart. Eventually she'll start getting the idea that it's actually the licking moment that's causing me to pause and the treats are not flowing when she's licking as well, but it takes a little bit of time to pick that up. 
Sliding into session six, this is where my expectations are gonna really start to pick up and increase. So for example, I want her positioning to be more precise each time before I deliver a reward. I want the duration of holds to get longer and longer. I'm looking for increased focus. And I'm also starting to slow down my treats uh, after my initial warm up. that is for the training session. By the way, yes, that is my dog on my sweatshirt. I'm a total fangirl of her and she's just so cute that I couldn't help it. Shameless plug, if you want one too, you can get one at my store at wholedog.shopify.com. Session seven. Okay, I make a couple of really rookie mistakes here. So for me, an off day usually means that I'm gonna encounter some hurdles in training because I'm already off and my dog's gonna be off. So this is your friendly reminder, take breaks, give yourself grace, and just go ahead and end your session if either of you are feeling frustrated. Now I'm gonna come back to this video in the troubleshooting segment so I can show you how I worked through and solved some of the problems that I encountered. Now, despite knowing that I had a rocky warm up for this training session, I went ahead and added in a new skill, which is conditioning to her opening and closing her mouth at the jaws. Now, remember we did the jaw hold practice earlier? Introducing that gives me something familiar to build on for opening her jaws up. I open her mouth, give her a yes marker, immediately let go and reward her. Repeat, repeat, and repeat. Sliding into session eight, I start with something easy that she already knows, just building in some duration with the brush on her teeth. And then I move quickly into what I introduced at the last session, which is opening and closing her jaw. I also layer in having the toothbrush in my hand as I begin to open and close her jaw too, so she gets familiar with the toothbrush being a part of that process and is comfortable with it. Now this part of the video I slowed down on purpose because I wanted to point out a few very specific things that I do during this training process. The first being that I pause. So after I did my warm up with her with things that she already knows, I waited just to see what she would do. And she took her paw and she flopped it right in my lap and said, yeah, I'm engaged. I wanna keep going, let's keep doing this. She gets to hit the start button again. So every once in a while, just pause, see what your dog does. If they re-engage with you, keep on going. Then I move into the jaw holds as I had started in the session prior. And I do that several times just to get her comfortable with what we're doing and repeat that process to make it more predictable. Then I layer in adding in the toothbrush. So I build up to the toothbrush being added in step by step. Now watch what she does here in this next little bit. The rolling over and the pushing her paw at me is really her just kind of saying, hey, can we do something else? Or I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this. Let's, let's play a different game. Now, if she really, really pushes it and continues to do that, I'm going to listen to that. I don't want to make her more uncomfortable or not want to work with me. But here, she really just kind of gives in and she's like, okay, maybe we can do this after I push it a bit. So I go ahead and move forward with the training and start inserting the toothbrush into her mouth. Then I break it down into something easy. You can see I just do a simple chin rest after she's let me do the insertion of the toothbrush and that will help continue to keep her motivated to work further through sessions. Session nine, we are on the home stretch. By the way, my puppy never lays down and simply chills. She's a busybody boaster on. So in this video, after her play session, I started her work with an extended down, which she's doing when I approach and start the teeth brushing the sesh. So I begin with some handling of her muzzle and gum line while holding the brush and then move on to brushing for longer periods, moving her lips to brush the back molars and continued practice opening her jaws up wide. Now I can get top, bottom, back and front with fairly minimal licking and completely comfortable cooperation from an otherwise very wiggly puppy. So that's it. Remember not to rush the process. And if you get stuck anywhere, go back to the prior step and repeat that multiple times before moving on and that should help. Speaking of stuck, I've got some bonus content for you. I went ahead and recorded a couple of trouble spots that I had during those sessions. So I wanna show you what some problem solving could look like if you run into any challenges. So stick with me for the next couple of minutes and I'll show you how I worked through each of the problems that I encountered while I did these training sessions with Vavachi. In this clip you're about to see, I ran into the issue that even though I was ready to work and I wanted to do the training, Vivachi was just not having it. You can see here, this is something she already knew when I put up my hand to put her nose into my hand to start the teeth brushing. And she just was like, nope, I'm not gonna put my hand there. <laughs> Here you can see she puts her paw up and her chin. She knows what I want, but she's doing something different. So that tells me that she's just really not into this at the moment. Here she was a little bit wiggly, so I could play with her. I could have some fun with her and then try to bring her back to the training session. And in this clip, I do try to reset her a couple of times with some easier skills. But when you're faced with this position, really listen to your puppy or your dog, because if you just push through it and you just kind of force them to stay with you in a moment that they're not really in already, you're probably gonna set yourself back a little bit. 
So here's what I did. I let her be her goofy self. I gave her belly rubs, I played with her, and then I took advantage of a position that she ended up landing in. As she rests a little bit into my lap, then I start doing some of the same things that I did in our initial training sessions when she was sitting up with me, like lifting her lip and then rewarding her when she's in that position to keep her in that position. And then, just to have some training mixed in, I try the toothbrush while she's in that alternative position. So the whole point to this clip that I wanted to show you is, first of all, go with the flow. You know, meet your dog where they are to start and then if you can introduce training based on a position they want to maintain or doing things in a different way that's a little bit more interesting or challenging to them, go for it. It doesn't have to be rigid, regimented, or strict. The mistake I made in this video has to do with feeding Vavachi. Vavachi is extremely food motivated. And as you notice in the video, she's paying a lot of attention to that treat pouch and is being really silly. I don't wanna do that. I'm just really interested in the food. The mistake that I made was I did feed her breakfast before this training session. This is essentially her breakfast in this treat pouch. It is just a high quality kibble and she's overly hungry and overly focused on food. So for her or a dog that's highly food motivated, you can go ahead and feed them some of their breakfast and then use some of their kibble if she she has dry food, if they have dry food for your training session. Now, a lot of dogs are not nearly as food driven as she is, so it's perfectly fine to use part of their breakfast and dinner in your training session, especially if you're looking to cut calories and not give your dog too many treats. But in this case, I took a misstep just because my dog is super food motivated and when she's really hungry and hasn't had her meals, it's very hard for her to think past what's in that treat pouch. The last tip I'll give you from this clip is that if you find that your dog is too focused on the treats and the treat pouch, make those go away so that you're not luring your dog. Hide it behind your back or have your treats in your hand behind your back so that you're able to reward them, not lure them so they're working for you and with you, not necessarily because you have food present. Finally, this clip, I told you I would come back to this one, and this is where I made the mistake of not having enough playtime and physical activity with her. You can see how excited she is. She's cooperating, but she's bouncing all over the place. Her tail's wagging, she goes into position, but her ears are super alert and super perked. In a minute here, you'll see where she's like, don't touch me, right there. <laughs> and then she paused at me like, that's not what I want. I'm ready to work, what are we doing? So her brain is all over the place. The mistake that I made here was not giving her enough playtime. She's a puppy. We gotta get those wiggles out first. So ideally what I could have have done in this situation is stopped the idea that I was moving forward with training and gone ahead and given her some of that extra physical playtime. If I'm short on time, I would roll in something that involves her brain as well, such as if I'm playing fetch with her, I'm gonna ask her for a sit, a down, a heel, yes, throw that ball so she can go get it and run some energy off. Then she comes back, I'm gonna ask her for a side and maybe an anchor and in between, and yes, I'm gonna throw that ball again. So that way, if I only have a few minutes to train in my session and focus on the skill that I'm focusing on, involving her brain brain while I'm doing something with her body can get me to that place a lot faster. The last thing I wanna mention in troubleshooting is the importance of adaptation. All dogs are individuals, so there's no one specific set ways that you have to do things to teach certain skills. In fact, it varies from dog to dog. So by all means, you don't have to follow everything that I do in this video to a T or anything anyone does to a T. See what works best for you and your dog and go with the flow. Try doing teeth brushing while they're in lateral position instead of straight forward. The other thing that you can do is practice a chin rest first and have them station their chin on an object and practice teeth brushing while they're stationed on that object instead of in your lap or in your hand or while you're simply pulling their lip up away from their teeth. You can also do things like finger brushing with a finger toothbrush instead of a long toothbrush if your dog isn't taking well to this long stick with prickly bristles. Finger brushing is pretty easy to condition. It just basically involves handling the mouth the same way that we did in practice initially and then handling the mouth with the finger brush in place and then adding the toothpaste as the third and final step. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found a lot of value in this video and that you're able to implement these steps to effectively and comfortably brush your dog's teeth. Please share this with all of your dog loving friends because oral health is so important for a dog's overall health. Happy training and all the best to you and your furry friends.